What's going on this week in Nerf? Welcome to This Week in Nerf, your source for first party, third party, and community Nerf news. I'm Adriana, and I know a lot of people have been having a rough time, so let's start with some uplifting news. There's a quote from Mr. Rogers that says, When I was a boy and I would see scary things in the news, my mother would say to me, Look for the helpers. You will always find people who are helping. And these are the helpers that I found. And this is by no means a comprehensive list. It's only the people that I happened to see this week. Phil Sweeting from Open Flywheel Project worked with Albany Medical College to design a splitter for respirators, allowing one respirator to serve four people. And BAM, Nerf NYC has been printing these respirators as well, and he says that they'll be serving at three different hospitals. And that's just amazing. Luke from Out of Dart has been using his 36 printers to print out face shields, along with Toxic Crow, Nerf War Battle, Project FDL, and us at Phoblast. We're all making face shields, and those will protect people's eyes and nose, and most importantly, their respirator masks from getting droplets on them and really protecting people who are at risk. And again, these are just the people I've seen, and I'm sure there are so so many more. So thank you from the bottom of my heart to all these people in our community doing their best to help out. It's amazing. And if you want to get involved too, go to 3dforcovid.com or check any of the other links in our description uh, and see how you can help out too if you have the time and the materials. It'll be greatly appreciated, I'm sure. I know a lot of us are pretty bummed about not being able to go out and play Nerf, not being able to get together with our friends to do mod parties, but wait, we can do a mod party together apart from people. The world's largest mod party will take place on Facebook and Discord. On the first weekend of April, the world's largest mod party will be hosted, and basically you just post to the Facebook as you do your work, and you get input and feedback from other modders. Uh, if you have questions or get stuck, you can ask your questions and other modders, modders will help you out and help you move forward through your mod. The Discord server is open for even more chat options, maybe video options. There's also going to be a webcast of a bunch of YouTubers uh, commenting on builds and answering people's questions, maybe even doing demonstrations. It's a really, really cool idea to have people stay apart like they should, but also be together with people around the world. And I just, it's so, so cool. And I love our community so much. Uh, another really cool thing about this event is everyone who participates, everyone who posts on the Facebook um, doing, doing their mod, doing their work, will go into a drawing for door prizes. Some of it's gonna be actual uh, product stuff, mod materials, could be swag. There's gonna be all, all kinds of options there. And it's pretty cool to be able to win prizes just by doing mods you wanted to do anyway. What a great excuse to mod. Uh, so make sure you follow the World's Largest Mod Party Facebook page as more info is announced. And I am really looking forward to participating in this one. There is a cool new 3D printed blaster on the street that is the Bulwark from Jackrabbit Nerfer. He had planned to show this off at Foam Fest, but since it moved to online only, What's the harm in showing it early? It's a full auto Talon flywheel blaster, uses hurricane flywheels, and the super, super cool thing is that it is top fed. How does that work, you ask? How do you feed those flywheels? He showed us in a little video that is a rotating hook that grabs the dart from the top of the mag, slides across some rollers to straighten it out, and then boop, right into the flywheels. And that's a super cool system. I really like all these new systems and how we're feeding flywheels. It'll, the, the future, the future is bright and interesting. It uses an N20 gear motor like uh, out of Darts' Jupiter, so it's a pretty readily available piece. And the mag release is also a really cool feature. It really, it springs up the blaster when you hit it. It just looks so satisfying <laughs> to change mags. And he looks like an action star right here where he's just flipping mags out. So cool. On his current setup, he's getting 100 FPS, but he has plans for a higher crush cage and a dual stage option in the future, and he says they will be released when it's finished. So I am very much looking forward to that. 
Workers released images of some dual stage cages that are sized for hurricane wheels. For those of you who don't know, hurricane wheels are smaller than the standard flywheel size and larger than the Flywheel of the World micro wheel size. I call them mini when I'm referring to them. Uh, but one of these cages is for the hurricane and the other one is for the swordfish and they're both going to come in a 35 millimeter and a 31 millimeter spacing. So that's pretty large and really, really small respectively. And just from a glance, I would not recommend buying these. And that's mainly because of the motor mounting method. The motors are held in with grub screws on the side of the motors instead of screwing into the front of the motor housing like you would with a standard flywheel installation. Um, Michelle actually tried this method first when she was designing our Category 5 hurricane cage. We ended up cracking a magnet from over tightening the screw and even then it didn't feel like it fit solidly in the cage. Reportedly, workers' design gets uh, 165 FPS on the 31.5 dual stage cage. Ours is a 33 millimeter cage, which is less crush, less stress for the motors, and gets 170 to 180. This discrepancy is likely because of their poor mounting method. When the darts go through, it really lets the wheels spread apart. And that's not ideal, it's not what you really want. So if you're working on a hurricane, out of Darts sells our Category 5 cage on his site. And if you want one for the Strife, I would check out Atch Attachments Design. I think that they are both superior methods. Hasbro has been making a series on Instagram called Nerf House. I would not recommend actually watching it, but the latest episode showed someone picking up a bunch of blue-tipped Ultra Darts. Later in the advertisement, uh, it says, Sonic Screamers, darts whistle as they fly. The rest of the ad doesn't show how they sound, so I don't actually know how it whistles, just that it does. Currently, I'm not a huge fan of the Ultra line, but I really, really do think that Screamers are a step in the right direction. If the blasters can't be good, like performance-wise, they should at least be fun. And the Screamer darts do up the fun factor. I love Whistler darts. I love worker darts when they do a near miss and they go Pfft. It's, it, it makes wars more fun. And I think that the, scream, the Screamer darts could really add some spice to house wars. And I'll probably end up buying a pack or two just to blink around the house. And we've got a little bit more Ultra news for you. I got to see a photo of the Ultra 6. But to retain my relationship with the person who gave me this photo, we have an artist rendition for the news. Uh, I do want to preface this section with saying that the photo that we got is fairly low quality. Um, a lot of the key parts of the blaster were edited out when they attempted to remove the background of the photo. And it seems like it's mid-production. looks like there's maybe some panels missing. There's some really, really odd things about the photo that I saw. So a lot of this section is actually going to be guesswork despite seeing an actual real life photo. Weird. Uh, but what I can say for sure with 100% certainty is it is a very sniper style ultra blaster. There is a huge scope on top. It doesn't look like it's removable. I'm hoping that I'm wrong on that point. The big old muzzle brake in the front is really reminiscent of a Barrett 50 cal, which I personally don't like, but a lot of people do like that one. The most interesting thing about this blaster is that it's mag fed and that I'm curious about. I want to see what those mags look like. I want to see how they feed. I'm very, very, very curious about the, about the mag fed. In the back of the stock, it looks like maybe extra, extra mag storage there, or it could be an empty slot for a battery tray. I'll get back to that in a second. Uh, long shot style mag release. I'm hoping that it's ambi. It'd be really weird if it wasn't. Uh, I'm thinking it's very, very likely a Springer blaster. There's no visible priming mechanism on the left side, though, again, the blaster is clearly missing pieces in our photo. Uh, but if it is only right-hand prime, the mag release doesn't make any sense. Uh, so it could have space in the front of the mag well for flywheels, and if that's the case, the rear slot is more likely a battery tray. Now, the photo I received had the area below the trigger guard 
completely erased, so I can't look for a rev trigger, which would be my main clue to figuring out if it's a Springer or a Flywheeler, but I'm still very much leaning toward it being a spring-powered blaster that just makes the most sense to me. And if that's the case, I'll reserve judgment on it for later because I've heard a lot of good things about people's experiments with using ultra darts in their Springer blasters. I'm, I'm reserving my judgment for now and I'm hoping that Hasbro got this one right. We'll see. And now it's time for the mod of the week. This week is from Dart Pistoro. This is a minimized rapid strike. And I know these are nothing new or revolutionary, but this one is so clean. The stock is gone, the front is gone, but I love that the muzzle has been moved back rather than just omitted completely. The box on the side here is for the battery. I don't usually like these battery boxes, but I think it looks good here. Uh, the tack rail on the side looks complete, even though it's shortened. Inside you've got fang revamps, worker titanium cage, bulldogs, and honey badger pusher running on 2S. So it's definitely gonna hit pretty well too. And something about the way this photo is taken just makes it look even smaller. Like my brain can't wrap its way around the scale of this photo. It looks like, it looks like a doll toy and I don't know how you manage that effect. Great job, it looks so clean, so good. Thank you so much for sharing it. And that is all the news we have for you this week. Thank you so much for sticking around until the end. I know this was a very long episode, at least it, it feels like it. I think this is a long one. It seemed like a lot of stories. As usual, the links to all the things I talked about are in the description. And also down there, there's a subscribe button and a like button, and that would be cool if you hit it. Oh. Uh, I hope that everybody participates in the world's largest mod party thing that I think will definitely lift people's spirits a little bit, give us a sense of community while we're all physically separated from each other. I think it'll be a really good time. Ah, oh, stay safe out there, everybody. Bye. Mm -hmm.